Hello everyone, happy Thursday. I hope you're having a great day. It's actually Wednesday, but I need to film this video early as I've got some other prior commitments and I won't have time. I wanted to do a video about praying effectively for people's salvation and kind of like, you know, specific scriptures showing why we need to do that. And so I will get right into it. So the first one is John 6, And it says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day, John 6, So this is Jesus talking and he is saying that no one can come to him unless the father who sent him to the earth to die for our sins draws that person, okay? And so first of all, we need to pray that the father would draw the person who we want to be saved to Jesus Christ, to himself, that they would change their heart and draw them to him, okay? And so the Greek word translated draw is helkuo, which means to drag literally or figuratively. And actually it's used in various scripture in the Bible and it means that, okay? It actually shows that action. It's the same word here that I just read as in other scriptures where it is talking about dragging a person. So this shows that this is a one-sided affair and God is the one who draws us to salvation and we are playing a passive role in the process. So we need to pray for God to draw our loved one to salvation. And then in John 6, 65, it says, and he said, this is Jesus, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. So yet again, him talking about people cannot come to him without the Father doing a work in that person's heart and drawing them to Jesus Christ. And so then Romans 5.10 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. So it's showing that we were enemies of God. We were not seeking God out. We were total enemies of God. That's another reason why we need to ask God to unharden people's hearts because we tend to harden ourselves off from spiritual things or the things of God, or we want spiritual things that align to what makes us comfortable instead of really confronting our life in sin. Okay, and the next verse is Jeremiah 17, 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Well, God can, and that's why we need him to draw loved ones. Because our heart's deceitful. We will lie to ourselves. We are desperately sick in our heart and desperately sick with sin. And then going on, um, it says Ephesians 1.18, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? So basically, we need to pray that the hearts of the, our loved ones would be enlightened so that they would know what is the hope that they're being called to, the hope of Jesus Christ, the hope of the gospel. Uh, we talked about yesterday, the heart being the immaterial part of the person. It wasn't talking about the actual organ, but the, um, the seed of emotions you know, our soul, our spirit. We need to pray that the eyes of our heart be enlightened so that we would know the hope that, that is the glory of Jesus Christ being called to that person. And then there's also a general call to God for all people showing that there is a God, all right? And that's spoken of in Romans. And also here, I'm gonna read in Psalm 19, one through four, 
the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaim his handiwork. Day to day, it pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, he has set a tent for the sun. So this is talking about general uh, call to people. When they look at creation, there is a God. You look around. If you really actually start studying science and animals or the human body, um, you can clearly see that we have a creator. Um, the thought of, to me, uh, of the idea of, um, you know, evolution, which I do not believe in. I believe in, you know, evolution in the sense of tiny incremental changes adapting to, you know, um, environment, but not massive evolution where you're changing from a primordial soup all the way into what we have become now with the intricacies of our whole entire body and you know and 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 how everything fits perfectly together and and animals and creatures and so forth if you really study you know eyesight or ear or whatever it really shows a creator okay and so, going on, John 16, 8, And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. This is talking about the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus talking about when the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost. He was going to convict, and that's what he does now, the world concerning sin and righteousness. And so we need to pray that the, that the Holy Spirit, the Lord, would convict people of sin and so that they would come to Jesus Christ so that he's doing a work in them, convicting them of sin and righteousness. And this is why, because the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him, foolish, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned, 1 Corinthians 2.14. Another one, it says right here, Matthew 13, 15, for this people's heart has grown dull and their, uh, and their ears they can barely hear and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. So we need, uh, people's hearts are hardened their uh, their eyes, uh, you know, their uh, their heart has grown dull. Their eyes, they can bear uh, their ears, they can barely hear. Their eyes are closed. Uh, we're hardened off. Okay, so we need the Holy Spirit to convict us. We need God to draw people to themselves. I always pray that God would open people's eyes, their ears, their soul. He would unharden their heart. He would give them a heart of flesh, a circumcised heart. Um, that he would transform them so that they would come to him, okay? And so the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all would reach repentance. So God wants people to be saved. That's why he's taking his time coming back. And it also says, this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. We need to pray that people would come to the knowledge of truth. That's another good scripture to pray. And also in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. God needs to give people a new heart. So we need to pray that, that God would give people that we love, who want we want to be saved, a new heart and a new spirit, and he would remove their stony heart, okay? And then it says, but to all who did receive him, 
who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. And that is the last scripture I'm sharing today. So we need to pray that God would cause people to believe in his name, okay, so that they would have the right to become the children of God, that they would receive him. And how does faith come? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the message of Christ or the word of God. So we uh, need to pray that God's word would go forth and it would prosper in that for which he has sent it, uh, that it would not return back to him void and it won't. And we need to pray that people's hearts would be unhardened, their eyes would be opened, that God would give them a new heart, a new spirit, that God would transform them and he would draw them to himself. So I encourage you to pray those specific things for people that you love, that you want to be saved. I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend and God bless.